uh, 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 uh. Competition starting to get thick, it's the click So I hope you watch your A-game, a mate, no lames On the track when we unite and spit, this is an A-game Better bring your A-game, A-game. Competition starting to get This thick. is a very special guest um, I, I need to I need to ask him how to pronounce his name so I don't screw it up. I always call him Backup Hangman. But, what, what, hey, what's up, man? You're on the Mike and JD show. Am I here? Can you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah we're, hey, we're, we're live. Bro. Hey, before I mess up your name, how do I pronounce your first name? Ibu. Ibu, okay. Ibu, uh, a.k.a. Backup Hangman on, on yes. X, Twitter, whatever, Twitter. Uh, he's also <laughs> a, a big-time guy on Russell Purist. Welcome to the show, brother. Thanks for joining us. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me. I uh, just got off work. I'm home. I'm uh, kind of unwinding. I was listening to you guys on the way home and uh, a lot of really good insight. You guys run a nice, nice, uh, nice show here. You guys are talking about the punk situation and, um, you know, all, all the all the issues stemming from that and, 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 and this breakdown of all out. So uh, I'm ready to go, man. I'm ready to go. I can be here as long as you guys have me and uh, I'm happy to be here. Awesome. Well, man. Yeah. Yeah, awesome, man. Well, thank you for joining. Yeah, look, you know, we're right. we're not going to take up too much of your time. I, I guess the first question is, yes. is where, you know, where do you stand with with? I don't want to say who's at fault and blah blah blah, who's to blame for everything, but where do you stand with just the overall vibe in the company right now? Um, <laughs> it's 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 tough, man. I uh, I had a rant that kind of uh, made the rounds on Twitter a day or two ago about this whole thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, I saw. <laughs> yeah, it's here's the thing. I, I said this on my show two Mondays ago, and and that's that. There's one core situation here that is, at least at on a tangential level, causing most of the related problems happening, and that's the CM Punk and Elite issue. Their beef. Um, the bottom line is, until that gets solved, it's just going to create another string of issues. And uh, quite frankly, because it's not going to get solved and because um, there's no efforts uh, on a managerial level to um, facilitate, to set up a meeting to then maybe, uh, I don't know, uh, rectify some of these problems. Um, these problems are just going to continue to persist. CM Punk's not going to get fired for this, guys. This, uh, this Jungle Boy situation, he's not getting fired for it. He, he will be back. I don't know when could be all out you know <laughs> <laughs> genuinely could be he could come back at all out he could come back uh, in a few weeks but the the bottom line is he's not getting fired for it he's going to stay right so i'll ask you guys a question as far as we know aren't the pay-per-view shows where collision and uh dynamite guys are all there under the same roof because that's that's how they've been doing it so far and yeah. um it, it's just it's just one of those things where you know what the cycle is you know what the cycle is. Uh, someone says something. Punk sees a, a passive aggressive tweet somebody makes. He takes exception to it. He keeps it. He files it in his brain. Uh, people say stuff back and forth. They talk to their uh, reporter of choice to communicate through the media. It plays out in front of all the fans who then witness, you know, these conflicting, contradictory reports uh, on a day long news cycle. Um, it's a back and forth. It's a mess. And then the next time that these guys are all under the same roof, CM Punk, because he's not somebody who's going to let these things, uh, you know, f- fly by him, is going to confront these people. And then a situation is going to happen. And that's just how it is. And uh, it's going to continue that way because the way I look at it, guys, is just <laughs> CM Punk is who he is. His opposition, so to speak, are who they are. And this is how the company kind of, this is the environment that the company allowed to exist. And so it's just going to persist until something is, until action is taken to, to change the culture from that standpoint. And uh, at the top, Tony Khan has a personal affinity for CM Punk. He loves Phil. He loves him as a person and he loves him as a performer. And you're going to tell me that that doesn't play a part in how, um, I don't know, how this situation has played out of course it has quite frankly i said this on my show as well the reason why the cm punk and AEW relationship has sustained even past all these controversies and even past the fact that there are many talents that 
um, are not fond of Phil and would rather he not be there. The reason why it's it's kind of powered through that is because CM Punk and Tony Khan are thick as thieves, you know, and because of that, it's like that other shit surrounding doesn't matter. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Do you yeah. not buy the Wade Keller report that came out earlier this week that maybe there was a rift in that relationship? Um, rift, no. The blow up probably happened 100%. Okay. Tony Khan is thicker skinned than maybe some people would imagine. Would not surprise me if CM Punk screamed at him and said, you know, things along the lines of I hate this place and this is a mess and get this shit together and so on and so forth. Probably happened. Probably happened. Uh, but knowing what I know of Tony Khan, right? His reaction is, I'm sorry, my other phone is buzzing. Uh, it's, it's, probably, it's probably coming through on stream. I'm so sorry. Yeah. No, um, you're cool. You're you're cool, dude. Right. So, look, knowing what I know of Tony Khan, you know what his reaction was to that? Probably, most likely, um, he most likely probably nodded his head, maybe even made concessions and agreed with some of the issues Phil was raising. Probably wasn't, you know, obviously pleased with the fact that he's being screamed at, um, but likely just no sold it and then just kind of walked right back, compartmentalized, and went right back to running the show. And. Um, as Wade said, and other outlets, I think, have kind of reported this. Look, the, the bottom line is this. When people are suspended in AEW, you have minimal contact with uh, top brass. It's just how they conduct things there when they do investigations, right? Yeah. Um, and so as a result, CM Punk isn't having the regular contact that he usually has with Tony, which is when there's an issue or just in general, they, they text all the time, you know? And in this case, he's not having that contact with uh, with Tony. But what I'd imagine, and I... and this belief was then reinforced by the things he said in the, in the, uh, in the, in the, uh, media call he had this morning. I'd imagine that Tony is working tirelessly to exhaust every resource he has to be able to speed up this investigation process and get Phil back on as quick as possible. If he could make the Chicago date on Sunday. And, uh, if he can't, then maybe they could then slow down with things and just take it as the, as it comes. But, um, if you if you put a gun to his head and asked him like truthfully like what what do you want to happen he'd probably say I want Phil to make Chicago so that they can do the match with Ricky starts. Um, so what are my thoughts on the overall situation? I mean, look, again, this is the precedent established in the company. These people are who they are. They react to situations the way they react, and um, you know, Jungle Boy felt comfortable enough to take the shot that he did. Phil is like, all right, then this means I have to punch him. It played out in front of Tony <laughs> Khan. And there you go. People don't, you know, <laughs> this is the situation. It's just not going to change. And um, again, I, I said this two weeks ago. Until the, at its absolute core, um, the core issue is rectified, this is just going to continue to repeat. And it's it's not. I, again, another thing. Um, I can tell you guys this. There were overtures made and efforts made to organize a CM Punk elite meeting a few weeks ago. And it briefly seemed like that was going to happen, but ultimately it did not. And at this point in time, I don't think it is just going to happen. And um, this is obviously a source of frustration for CM Punk. And this is not me here's where I, I start like i'm just going to make this clear now from here on i am now interpreting and speculating based off not you know information i have at in front of me right Th that is definitely the reality that he will not be able to work those top stars absolutely contributes to mounting frustrations that are causing him to lash out in other ways ways like the hangman shot after after the collision episode right or you know, whatever other thing, like Jungle Boy, fighting Jungle Boy. Um, so it just, this is just the situation we have in front of us. I, If you ask me, JD and Mike, um, it appears like the wrestling business aspect of wrestling makes CM Punk deeply unhappy. And uh, if he can't, if he can't, have the top programs that you would think he should have on paper. I don't know what the point is in being there, especially since he's already kind of made the enemies he's made and that's just not going to change. And he's going to be who he is. I, I, I don't really understand the long term. I don't see what the, the long term future is for this relationship. That's what it yeah. sounds like. Like this sounds like 
a complete disaster. Like you've got, you've got a bunch of people who, who don't want to work with you. Like we were talking to our friend, uh, we we're talking to a friend earlier today and he's, he compared it to like a breakup or a divorce that just kind of gets dragged out longer and longer. And it makes people more and more bitter until the very end. And that, and that's what it feels like as a fan that we're watching is I'm a Chicago guy, man. I want to see, I want to see CM Punk in this company. I think the company is better with him in it, but I just hate the fact that we have to have this conversation every week. Like we're an hour into our show and that's literally the only thing that we've <laughs> talked about. And it's yeah. like, it's, it's so, it's so played out, but at the same time, it's the number one driving narrative in this whole business right now. And I just, I don't see unless Tony Khan really puts the foot down and says, look, we got to fix this. This is, this is unhealthy. And I don't know if he thinks it is unhealthy, quite frankly, he seems to play up these things when he has these media calls like, Oh, you know, sometimes people like each other. It's not bad for a product. And like, I don't, I, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get where he's coming from on this stuff. It's funny when he, when he would first say that type of thing, I, I didn't really, disagree i was like yeah it's wrestling people don't like each other everybody has some type of small you know ticky tack issue with the next guy they all talk shit about each other they all bury each other to some degree uh to other people that's just the wrestling business and so when tony would say these things especially proceeding all out last year he said this to dave Meltzer literally right before you know this happened and my thought was like yeah I mean, it's wrestling that just it is what it is right but now that we've seen how that manifests itself into just negative publicity and, and just untenable situations now within his own company, um, I, it, I'm on the other side of the fence now. I'm not saying it has to be kumbaya and that they have to hold hands and it has to be 2019, you know, where everybody's just like the best of buddies, at least, uh, you know, that's how it appeared. But um, again, and maybe on some level, maybe someone would, maybe somebody like a CM Punk would watch this and say, do you think it's fair that these guys can just freeze me out and box me out because of A, B, and C? But the bottom line is, look, it's the EVP's company. You know, it's Tony's company. And uh, he played in their sandbox until he could no longer, you know, for a multitude of reasons, some of which he contributed to. And so this is just the situation that it is. And uh, yeah, what's up? No, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I just a quick fine. question. Yes. Um and and JD, you can weigh in on this too as soon as that train leaves your uh, leaves your neighborhood. <laughs> sorry, JD had to mute his microphone because the train's going by. Hey, um, so is it do we think that you know maybe punk doesn't respect Tony Khan's ability to handle these situations? Is that the reason why he feels the need to handle them himself? Because this, you know, Jungle Boy, I'm not he, Jungle Boy is not like a he's not like a jobber, right? He's not an opening curtain guy. He's a mm. relatively known star in the company. He's a day one guy. He's, mm. uh, you know, people really like this kid. Um, but at the same time, he's also not like a main event player. Why would a guy like CM Punk even feel the need to mess with a guy like Jungle Boy? Why wouldn't he be like, hey, Tony Khan, you need to get this little shit in line. You know what I mean? Like, why would he even go and confront this kid? Yeah, um, if you were to ask anybody from CM Punk's camp or people close to him or him himself, he would he would tell you that uh, he's made attempts to kind of voice uh, his concerns about these types of things, and that to to him it wasn't properly handled. And so, yeah, if you you know your question about does he feel like he has to take this upon himself, he he one hundred percent does. Um, so yeah, he he definitely. If you were to ask him, like. Did you just not think that someone was going to punish Jack Perry? He'd probably say no, they wouldn't. Um, yeah. I spoke close. I spoke to people close with CM Punk about these types of things, and and, and that's the sentiment, you know. And it goes back, obvi all the way back to, you know, what he believes is the first big shot, which is, as you guys would know, it's uh, from from his standpoint, it's the Hangman Page thing in the promo. Um, and so again, th these are. These are circular conversations. These are the things we're touching on here. These are issues that existed a year ago. And um, the thing that I keep going back to is just, this is untenable. This is not sustainable. Um, Punk is going to come back. And likely what they're going to decide is, all right, we'll stop booking Jack Perry for the Saturday tapings. Right? 
okay. And then he does some collisions and it'll be fine and quiet for a few weeks. And then what a pay-per-view happens. Everybody's in the same roof again. He'll probably try to find an elite member to talk to them, to force his way through a meeting. It's not, it still just won't happen. And, uh, like I said, you know, a dark order member is going to like a negative punk tweet and he'll see it. <laughs> or, or, like what a, It sounds funny, yeah. but the, like, this is, this is how this shit goes. You know, yeah. a, a fucking, I don't know. Nakazawa is going to just like tweet, like what a fraud. And he'll, you know, he'll find that. That's just, that's how it is. Um, so I, 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 like, I wish, I wish I could get Tony in a room and be like, What's what's the what's the long term vision here? I, I think the biggest one of the other unfortunate things about this is, you know, for me as a fan, right? Um, I actually don't really give a shit if wrestlers are beefing with each other behind the scenes as long as like my on screen product is good. Me neither. Same. I agree. Yep. Um, but this has affected the quality of AEW's product, even if indirectly, because um, the idea was Collision is going to be the best of the punk vortex of AEW. And uh, dynamite would be the best of everything else, and you'd get you know this the different mixes and in, in their full unfiltered form, and it'd, it'd be great. And we saw flashes of this. I mean, uh, there's been some collision episodes that I think have been excellent. Um, but ultimately, broadly speaking, when I think about it, and just how I feel when I watch the TV, I don't feel like I'm getting the best of both worlds. I feel like I'm getting diminishing returns of AEW's product. Uh, I, I agree. I think the last couple of weeks of TV have not been great on either side. No right? collision collision by its own existence has to be the better show because why is it there? Right. It has to like go above and beyond because it will never get the dynamite ratings and it has to be just to justify its existence. It has to go above and beyond. And I don't, I feel like we rotate through the same seven, eight wrestlers every week doing different things. Whereas dynamite, it feels like it feels like both products are stuck in the mud. Like you say, this and it's all stemming from from this toxicity, and it just we're we're stuck. What do we do? That's what I'm saying. And so it's yeah. like it's like all right. So they're not going to settle this issue. They're going to both be in their little orbits. The TV suffers because it's just it's almost like you know spinning its wheels on on e on each side. And um, I almost feel like AEW used to benefit from being the buffet, from being the variety show, from being the show that like gave you a piece of this and a piece of that and a piece of this you know you tune into a dynamite from 2021 or 2022 and punk and max are doing a crocket angle and then the very next segment you're getting like a, a you know a six a trios match that would fit out a pwg show and i love that personally because I, I, I like different types of wrestling and so the variety was great um but being inundated with the same kind of direction it just I, doesn't work for me um the way it's being done on tv right now and uh there's just this looming overarching feeling when I watch it that I'm watching a compromise. This is a compromise. This isn't like a thing that they're doing of their own volition, a thing that they're doing because they think it's best. You can feel that this is uh, that we're watching a situation play out right before you because it has to be that way. And uh, I don't love it. I don't love it. So again, the idea that punk doesn't like the young bucks and the young bucks hate his fucking guts you know, before it was like, like, whatever. I mean, it sucks that they're not going to wrestle each other, but like, they, I don't, you know, these people aren't my, <laughs> I don't fucking have dinner with these individuals. So it doesn't matter to me. I'm a wrestling fan. Right. But now it is affecting these products. And uh, that's where it's like, all right, like, what are we doing here? You know, the shows are worse and there's a, it's a mess backstage. And, and I didn't even get into the fact of, of how, how, um, you know, talent are feeling about this because I, like, I, I spoke to it. I spoke to top level talent in AEW after the situation and, and, and people, people uh, within the promotion. And um, it wasn't even the, the, I think the saddest thing was um, it wasn't even like a, a, a pure sentiment of like, fuck Phil or fuck Jack Perry. It was more like, fuck this, that this happened. Yeah. You know, we just did, we just did when the a lot, Sean's um, reporting on this was, was dead on in that like the big feeling was just like, man, we just did Wembley and this is what we're talking about, you know? And uh, they pointed the blame in like every direction. That was the, that was the feeling like, like of like, yeah, the culture is why this happened this way. Yeah. Jack Perry was wrong for his shot. Oh man. Why did Phil overreact and feel the need to fight him? All these things were, ha were, were feelings expressed to me concurrently. 
you know? Um, so it's a shame. Oh, so it feels like when you're a kid and you go visit a buddy's house and his parents are getting a divorce and everything is all awkward <laughs> and you can't, but you're too young to really kind of process this. All you know is that something feels off. And that's the vibe I get watching the shows lately. I find myself playing with my phone more often than anything right now watching dynamite and collision and it's it bums me out because it makes me it makes this not fun it makes i hate th- i hate that this has become what our shows are right it's just that we're yeah. you know constantly combing through twitter looking for what might be a passive aggressive remark debating you know whether or not these guys could win in a fight and it's just it's so stupid I, who gives it. a sh- I right. used to i here's the thing first of all when, when dynamite was you know firing on all cylinders You'd watch the show. You'd be energized. You'd be thinking about like next week's show for the next seven days. You know, there'd be so much. There was so much there when it comes to just depth of content that like there was so much to kind of um, break down and talk about. Uh, I find myself thinking about AEW actively on the off days and all that kind of thing. I was fucking itching like a crack fiend. And and now it's (laughs) like I watch it and then I and I finish it and I'm like, that was cool. And I don't find myself like itching for you know televised AEW content until it comes. And then when it comes, I watch it out of habit. And like more often than not, it's not a terrible show. I mean, there's a lot of good wrestling because the roster is phenomenal, but it, it's just not the same in that respect. And then again, I go on my shows and, and, and or I, you know, read through social media and like the conversations aren't about the first and foremost front page conversations aren't like, Oh man, what did you guys think about like this booking decision or where they're going with this pay per view and this angle? No, it's 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 the morning's report on what happened backstage or this plan or that thing or this thing that fell through or this guy who doesn't want to do this with that guy. And uh, I used to dread like being on the shows like a year ago, right? When this was start just early like stuff starting to linger and fester, I used to like roll my eyes. Oh, I gotta fucking talk about the news for ten minutes before I can just break down like this match I really like. And now that's all the shit it's about. You know, everybody's show is just about the bullshit before the TV. And and it's like, I got to talk about that exhausting conversation. Then I got to talk about a show that didn't really move me that much. Um, so, yeah, I hate to be a downer, but that's just kind of um, oh, that's, that's, that's just kind of where I'm at with it right now. That's reality. When we had our yeah. Impact show, like... Um, I would go out of my way to try to work in some AEW talk back then because the shows were so interesting and there was so much cool stuff going on from right. a wrestling and from a storytelling aspect. And now that it's just, it's all, it's like 1997 and it's not the good part about 1997. Yeah. You've spitting truths. Yeah. I agree with that. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Yeah. Um, I, I, I got a good question and I, I will say this sure. is a good question. <laughs> um, you know, considering that you you have contacts within the punk camp and you seem to be friendly with some of the people that he knows, is having a Twitter name of Backup Hangman the best idea considering all the stuff that's going on in AEW? <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't give a shit. I, I, yeah, I'm I'm, just... I, mean, I have expressed to the punk like, Here's the thing about yeah. it, right? So here's, here's a misconception, and I'll, I'll happily point it out here because I'd imagine maybe even people of your guys' audience might, might think this, but... Um, me having so-called contacts with the, the punk camp, so to speak, right? That does not mean that I, I, I co-sign all the views of, of CM Punk in his camp, nor does it mean that CM Punk's beefs are my beefs. I don't know Mr. Stephen Woltz. I don't know Nick and Matt Jackson. I don't know Kenny Omega. So why would I personally have a problem personally with these individuals? You know, I, uh, I, I think the elite are excellent wrestlers. And um, Hangman Page is half of my namesake because when I made my wrestling Twitter account uh, two and a half years ago, Hangman Page is one of the best res- uh, wrestling baby faces in the fucking world. And uh, so, so that's kind of where that came from. And uh, no, this was never brought up. Uh, and I have expressed uh, to this camp uh, that I think the elite are great wrestlers and it's not a problem because it shouldn't be a problem because I'm a grown man and I'm allowed to uh, enjoy any wrestler that I want. You damn right. And I was just busting balls. I just, <laughs> no, 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 you were, you were, here's the thing, you were, but but yeah. I, I saw the opportunity to just kind of yeah. put that out there, you know, because because I because I do see that, though. I do see people kind of people assume that when you come into contact with various camps or this or that, because this is such a polarizing issue. Right. Yeah. You know, everything has to be so segmented and like, oh, man, he he talks to these people. That means this or he talks to them. And that means that he he, he he's a big fan of this guy. So that means he feels this way. 
And, and in some cases, for maybe the you know the freakazoids on social media, it's that way. A lot of the hardcore CM Punk super fans automatically have to be these cornet adjacent you know maniacs that that hate the elite or hate this or hate that. You know, CM Punk is my favorite active wrestler from a fan perspective. But that doesn't mean that I have to now you know, just assume every CM Punk based opinion or, you know, this and that. So that's kind of, that's kind of the thing with that. No, it's awesome. And I'm glad that you clarified that because I, there's, I, I have seen some of that stuff online and I'm just like, you know, Ibu sounds like he's just like a normal dude. Like, I don't don't think he's taking sides one way or the other. You just happen to have a lot of information on one of the sides. I swear to God, it's, it's, it's so funny. I am. The other thing is because of this, um, I think people let out their punk based frustrations at me specifically. And I'm like, Oh my God. Um, I think whatever people are mad about with, regarding CM Punk, they're like, I will this, there's this fucker on Twitter who's active and I could just curse him out just yesterday. I, I think yesterday or the day before um, I tweeted out and I just kind of threw it out there. Cause like an instant reaction. I didn't even think when I posted it, but um, when I found out that that punk was suspended, I was like, ah, oh, man, maybe he could, maybe he could drop the, uh, the real world championship to, uh, to, to Ricky before and then service suspension and someone was just kind of like for him to drop a championship it has to be a real championship first you bell end and I was just kind of <laughs> like I was like I, I don't know I was like miss I don't know you you know you don't know yeah. me why are you why do you feel so comfortable with insulting somebody that you do not know and and why does his opinion make me a bell end and then my yeah. response is to get blocked and I was like man what's going on here because I yeah. Like I, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I, I'd like I, to explain to that person that none of these belts are real and nobody actually wins these matches. Like, relax, guys. Right. And, and But that's the thing. This is such a polarizing situation that everybody is turned up about it. You know, everybody's so passionate about it and everybody's so, um, it seems like stressed or something. Like, the, the animosity, but like, that people are exhibiting towards each other because of maybe differences of opinion or perspective on this CM Punk elite beef. I think part of that is also why I would like this to just fucking go away because my God, I personally do not base my friendships online regarding wrestling over your stance on CM Punk, CM Punk with AEW and brawl out. I don't fucking care. In fact, JD and Mike, a lot of my colleagues on wrestle purist, can't fucking stand cm punk they actively hate the guy and they think that he's the biggest issue in aew he's the guy that needs to go away he's the cancer that's infecting the entire promotion right you know what my opinion on that is i don't give a shit it doesn't matter i have real world problems i have a job i have bills to pay i don't fucking care you know but but what i what i see as just a, a bigger trend is um this is affecting people's relationships and how they uh, interact with each other and all this and that. And it, it goes to show you how polarizing of a problem it is. It's affected wrestling discourse. It's affected AEW internally. It's affected the product. It's affected how fun wrestling is to discuss online. I, I guess I covered that with discourse, but still, like, it just <laughs> what a shitty situation, you know? Yeah. No, yeah. Mike and, and I on are top- part of. Oh, okay, no, no, see, you, Mike you, and I Okay, Mike and I are part of multiple discords and Slack channels and stuff like that. Multiple. And there's so much talk. And it's all like wound up, pissed off. People are mad constantly about this. And it's gotten me to the point where I don't even want to go on these things because it's just everybody is miserable all the time. And I'm always in the mind that I don't know any of these people. Like, I don't. Right. I don't care. Like, I don't know any of them. And neither do you. Right. Like none of these, no one who's getting all worked up over this is actually friends with these guys. So it just, I, it's become such a negative space that it's, it's taken the joy out of my hobby, which I freaking hate right now. Right. Like said, and, we're and, an hour and a half in and that's all we're talking about. And, and here's the thing. This is not me saying you can't be opinionated about the situation. For sure. We're all, we're all receiving inform. We're all receiving information on this because people are reporting on it. We're all privy to what's, what's being put out there. And so, of course, you know, on a social media, you know, the, the idea is this is a place where you just voice your opinions. There's nothing wrong with being opinionated. But I, but what I was speaking to is just how it's affected how people communicate with each other. You know, um, like you said, it's just not it's not fun. I wake up. I got group chats of wrestling that I open and it's like 40 messages just of people raving and ranting about the latest update in CM Punk and banning this guy from Collision or that guy. and. Uh, um, 
yeah, sometimes it's just like, man, I, I really, uh, this just sucks. I just want to talk about, can I share a Terry Funk video? Can I just share, like, Fuck, can I? Yeah. Can I, can can I, I, yeah, it's like, it's like, can I, can I fucking, <laughs> Jesus, can I just, can I just fucking, can I post a Kurt Angle clip, you know? I don't know, you know? It's tough. Yeah, it, it is, man. And we, you know, we're not going to take up too much of your time. We really do appreciate it. Before right. we get into it, I, I got another question for you. But before yes. we actually get into it, k- plug Russell Purist, man, because you guys sure. are blowed up all over YouTube, man. You guys are doing monster numbers over there. Yeah, um, it's it's crazy. This whole thing just fell into my lap. I I, I literally, the, the backup Hangman account was made because I just wanted to talk about wrestling uh, on a Twitter page that wouldn't bother my my normal mutuals who didn't care about wrestling. And so it was like a borderline burner where I could just post about stuff. And then it kind of grew. And I was like, wow, this thing is like growing. And the next thing you know, I get, I get noticed by, by Monty who's who, who runs the Russell Pierce page and he's a really good guy. And uh, he, we used to do spaces and stuff. And uh, you know, um, he, he reached out to me and he's like, Hey man, I'm really trying to expand this thing and, you know, expand the website, get some writers in. I think we, we, we could really carve our own sp- uh, niche in the space you know, we, we have different kinds of people talking wrestling than the types of people you see, um, uh, uh, you know, with wrestling media. A lot of the media is kind of aging out and that whole thing. And I was like, yeah, man, you know, my schedule is limited, but I'll do the podcast. And um, it's just blown up. It's blown up. It's elevated so many of the people in, involved with the brand. The community is great. Uh, we, <laughs> it, it's it's kind of remarkable what, what's happened with Wrestle Pierce. So uh, I have a lot of fun with the shows. You know, we get into trouble sometimes because because we're very... Uh, you know, we're just, we're, we're, you know, some of the people are young and crazy, but I, I, I love the team. I love everybody involved with Russell Purist. Uh, I love coming yeah. on the shows and doing it. And uh, if you guys could just, if you guys want to check us out, we're Russell Purist on YouTube and uh, our shows are great, man. You know, we just talk wrestling. We have a good time there. Our super chatters are out of their minds and uh, it, it, it's, it's just good stuff. So check us out at, on, on Russell Purist on YouTube. Absolutely. And shout out Parker, uh, a friend, friend of ours, Parker. He's mm-hmm. a great dude. Um, yeah, yeah. Parker's a great guy, man. Host a dumb guy live. Yeah, yeah. Which is crazy because he's not actually a dumb guy. He's actually really smart. Yeah. The fun. The, oh my god. Here's a here's a quick one. Uh, someone once replied to uh, one of our tweets advertising dumb guy live, and he was like, "Yeah, I never checked this show out because it seems like I I'm not really interested in, in dumb conversation." And he had to reply like, "It's it's just a, it's just a name, you know. It's just a name." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I I got one last question for you. Right. Um, so uh, we started this show. The original show was called Brace for Impact, and it was an Impact Wrestling podcast. That's a great name. Um, thank thank you. you. Thank you. And it yeah. still exists. Go to patreon.com slash the Mike and JD show. That show still exists, but it has uh, turned into um, the Mike and JD show for the most part now. Um, but while we had that podcast, you were put up on trial for liking some of the matches that were happening in Impact. Is that correct? You remember this? <laughs> Dude, I, that's, oh. that's how I... That's how I first discovered you, bro. I had an wow. impact podcast. So I see <laughs> if I would see somebody complimenting impact, I would take notice. And then all of a sudden you got put on the trial of your life on Twitter. Yeah. I think Daniel yeah, Garcia was... was involved with that. How did that go? How did that come about and how did that end up? Yeah, uh, I committed the mortal sin of enjoying a match from impact. Uh, it was a, <laughs> it was a, it was a trying time in my life. I was confused. Um, just you know, was in a weird headspace, started to watch some more impact liked what I saw and uh, decided to voice it, which was, which is one of the bigger crimes uh, you can make on wrestling Twitter. And uh, <laughs> you know, the powers that be the ju- the judicial powers that ran wrestling Twitter decided to put me on trial. And uh, I'd like to say that um, legally I was cleared of all charges. It was, it was a tough fight. Um, Garcia didn't help my case at all. He thought I was guilty. <laughs> Uh, but, but I made it out. I made it out in one piece and, and I'm glad for it. I'm happy for it. I'm sobered up now. Um, but yeah, there was a time when I, I was, I was, I was live tweeting some impact and that, that was an interesting period in my life. Yeah. Yeah. So if, uh, Will Ospreay, uh, Russell speedball at bound for glory in October, are you going to get put back on trial? Cause that match sounds fucking awesome. If it happens. I think that the public respects Will Ospreay's wrestling ability enough. To give me a pass on that one. Okay, I would, I would, I would hope so. I would hope so. Right. Um, JD, you got any more questions for Ibu, man? This has been no, a lot I, of fun. It has been a lot of fun. I'm glad you're able to join us tonight. This is, yes. uh, this is a crazy time. And like I said, I hate that we have to do this, but I'm really glad you were able to come on with us mm. and just talk about the situation. 
from a different perspective. Because I think we hear in our circles, we hear so much from the other side that I think it's nice just to have different voice. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, I don't, I don't think we're, we're either of us, like any of us are um, off on the broad t- point that like this, this is still an issue that needs to be taken care of. And if not, it's not, it's never going to get better. Um, but again, it, it is a different angle, me, me popping on here. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm more than um, comfortable doing so. And I, I never have a problem uh, explaining my perspective uh, to people. Cause I think, I think when you, when people hear other people, articulate how they feel about something or, or just kind of come into a space and explain themselves. It's, I think it's much more productive than interpreting what you think of a guy based off just their Twitter posts. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, you know, I, I'm just a normal innocuous guy who, uh, you know, this is just, this is just where I'm at with all this stuff. So I'm glad you guys gave me the platform to uh, voice those perspectives and, and opinions and explain myself. And, uh, I had a lot of fun here. I had a lot of fun here. So, so yeah. thank you. No, well, thank you. Invite, man. Thank you. And uh, congrats on all the success with the Twitter right. account with Russell Puris. You guys are killing right. it over there. And you are, dude, you are, you're a friend of the show now. You're welcome anytime, brother. Thank you thank so, you much, so for much for being on. Appreciate you guys. Thank you guys so much. Follow me at back of hangman. And, uh, yeah, uh, I might swing by another time or two. Thank you guys so much. Appreciate it. Competition starting to get thick. It's the click. So I hope you watch your A game. A main. No rain. On the track when we unite and spit. This isn't a game. Better bring your.